Hello everybody, one year ago I posted an introduction video, part 1, on the amazing botanical greenhouses we got here in Belgium. And I just realized that since then I completely forgot to post the second part, which is obviously the best part, because it shows all our houseplants in their natural habitat. And what's so interesting is that they have separate greenhouses here for each type of climate on our planet. So let's have a closer look together. Before entering the greenhouses, I just had to show you this amazing philodendron. I think it's a philodendron elegance that they had in the restaurant. And without a moss pole, philodendrons are happy to just trail down. First up is the tropical rainforest greenhouse, where we are greeted by a jungle velvet calathea. It was a sunny day, which is perfect to see this greenhouse in all of its glory. And I was mainly impressed by all the epiphyte plants they displayed, like for instance this Ripsalis here. They also had lots of other epiphytes like Peperomia, many orchids and hoyas growing on the trunks of trees. And it's actually interesting to see how many houseplants are actually epiphytes in the wild. Apart from the ones I just mentioned, they also had a bunch of tree ferns and bromeliads growing on trees. The good thing is that these epiphytes generally don't harm their hosts at all, so it's all good. Here you can see a carnivorous plant. And in tropical forests most roots are not in soil, but just in plain sight. This ant plant has actual ants visiting its trunk. And this is by the way a fun and very easy care house plant. I got one at home without any ants, obviously. This Dizzy Gothica or False Aurelia is also quite a popular house plant. Me, I find it quite tricky, so mine is growing in pom at home. And I'm pretty sure that you can guess from what plant these giant aerial roots are. It is, of course, the Monstera deliciosa. This philodendron insigne is actually quite uncommon. This is the plain green one and not the purple one. And here we got a philodendron melanoniae hugging a very big trunk. And just look at all the bulbs of these epiphytic orchids. This Ctenante compressa is a clump forming plant also known as the Bamburanta plant. Now the crown jewel of this collection is this very rare Quango giant cycad. The biggest cycad in the world, it's native to Africa, fast growing up to 20 meters high. Even in this very humid greenhouse, this Dracaena has lots of browning leaves, which teaches us that nature isn't perfect. The first anthurium that I spotted was this anthurium crassinervium. Now I was totally impressed by this gigantic philodendron and if I had to make an educated guess I would say it's either a maximum or an esmeraldense. These micro gamma ferns thrive in high humidity and when they are happy they just start walking all over these tree branches. Now I have seen some big monstera plants in my life, but I think this must be the biggest one I have ever seen. A somewhat lesser known jungle cactus is this beautiful Ripsalis crispata. This Peperomia polystachia definitely merits its other name, which is Button Peperomia. And as you can see, the epiphytic plants definitely ruled this greenhouse. 
And by the way, this other peperomia here is a peperomia glabella. One of my favorite house plants is this beautiful aluminum plant. And what is not to like about this beautiful Philodendron gloriosum? Another gigantic aroid that I discovered in this greenhouse is this Raphidaphora decursiva growing up a big palm tree. But to me even more impressive was this majestic Philodendron undulatum. Its aerial roots are thick as branches and the actual stem looks like a real tree. And only high up the tree that it's using for support, it shows its beautiful foliage. And this really shows us the full potential of a philodendron plant. And let's not forget all the growth going on on the tropical forest floor. Here we are in a different greenhouse. This is the brand new cloud forest greenhouse. This Vasconcella monoica plant is native to South America and it has some sort of orange fruit. And some orchids don't grow on trees but just in plain old soil. And I think we can all agree that the greatest artist on earth is actually Mother Nature. These beautiful dendrobium orchids are native to Asia. I also noticed this rare species of spider plant. Now this may be a shady lady, at least she's wearing a beautiful flower. You can really tell that this cloud forest greenhouse was built just now, so I should come back in a couple of years to see how it changed. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this has to be some type of goldfish plant. This Eochroma plant is a shrub from South America. It has beautiful purple trumpet-like flowers. This Acanthus montanus plant is a mountain thistle and it's showing off some nice variegation. Now I don't know what aroid this is, but in my opinion this looks absolutely stunning. Now this trunk here might look totally psychedelic and artificial, but it's actually a real plant. It is the Titan arum, which is an amorphophallus. Now at this moment the plant is not flowering, but it appears that when the flowers appear, they really have a bad smell. You could easily see that the plants were really doing well in the humid climate and some of them were even producing berries. And here we got a Colocasia that's actually growing in a pot. Another recently renovated greenhouse is this Mediterranean biome. These beautiful red flowers seem to be just floating in the air and they are stunning. This giant succulent is a Crassula ovata, often kept as a houseplant too. This balsam spurge euphorbia is native to the Canary Islands and the Sahara Desert. 
This beautiful plant is called a fan aloe and it's native to only a few mountains in South Africa. The next greenhouse I want to show you contains plants of the tropical wetlands. And sometimes a plant compensates its average foliage with just stunning flowers. This clusia plant that you can also keep as a house plant is all about the roots and just a little bit about the foliage. And here we got my nemesis house plant, which is of course the croton. And this is where crotons really belong, in a greenhouse or of course in the wild. After the wetlands, let's go now and have a look in the desert. I have to say I really like the red edges on the leaves of this Crassula plant. This Euphorbia atrispina is a cushion type of Euphorbia. This bare branch that you see here is actually a Pachypodium plant, a succulent native to Madagascar. These cute fluffy leaves belong to this Echeveria plant and you can see that the plant is about to flower. And of course no desert would be complete without all types of cactuses of all sizes and shapes. And I love all the different colors on succulents, just compare the color of this Cylindropuntii with the beautiful light green color of this Euphorbia plant. This Euphorbia is more pencil shaped or finger shaped if you will, and it's native to South Africa. I have to say I was pretty impressed by the collection of Euphorbia plants that I kept in their collection, and as you might know, Euphorbias are quite easygoing houseplants too. And of course, what is not to like about flowering cactuses like these mammillarias? They had a separate greenhouse for the subtropical rainforest plants. Now, I live in an apartment, so I can only dream about having a garden with all these plants and statues like these. They also had a section on the evolution of plants, from the oldest to the newest, starting with these living stones. Here you can see another very old plant, I think it's some type of papyrus plant. This trunk here is supposed to be a Sigillaria plant, but they are extinct since 400 million years, so I'm pretty sure this is a plastic one. Okay, that's all for today's video, which was the second part of my visit to the botanical gardens in Belgium. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and or subscribing to my channel. For now, I wish you a very nice day and I hope to see you back real soon on my channel. Have a nice day. Bye bye.